In the last video, we had a really quick intro into constructors. In this video, I want to take a look at some design choices that we can make with these constructors. So for that, we go back to our code. And what's really interesting to me is this part of our code. So we have here the input validation that we do before we create our animal class. But now the question you might want to ask is, do we want to leave the input validation to the code that implements the constructor or do we want to leave the input validation to the constructor itself? In my opinion, it's better to leave the input validation to the class itself. And that's because when we are going to use this class in another place, we know that our class is going to be used the way that we design it to be used. So I'm going to change this constructor a little because this constructor is something in Dart, which makes it really easy to create a really simple constructor but I'm going to write out what it actually does behind the scenes. So I'm going to leave this constructor for now. It's going to cause some errors, but don't mind that. So what the constructor actually does is it expects a string name. And as you can see, if you click here, you can see that it does expect a string name and a string kind. So string kind, and then we open up curly braces. And what it actually does is it sets the name of our object to the values that we put in. So if we delete that old constructor now, this is what that constructor actually did, but it generated this code for us by using that implementation. So what we can do now is we take this input validation, we cut it out of the code and we place it right here. And now we know for sure that when somebody uses this constructor that there will be input validation and that you don't have to create each time that you implement this constructor, you don't have to check the inputs because the class will do that for itself. So if I now run the code, everything should be still fine. And if I now leave this empty this way and run, then you should see some errors. And as you can see, uh, we have three errors and it didn't create anything because for every animal that we are going to create, the kind will be empty. This way we are able to make sure that the data that we expect is used inside our class. But there's still a workaround around this, and this I'm going to look at in the next video. But something that could still be a problem is that if somebody calls this animal.name, it can override it still with an empty string, and then we still have an object with an empty name, which isn't what we want. So let's take a look at some things that we can do with properties. 